play, unsurprisingly. It's shiny. Something shiny. Bloody. Pots and um, plates. Solid. Malleable material, squishy kind of substances. Um, I suppose the artistic side of ceramics. Grayson Perry. Floor tiles. Home domestic objects. Alligators. The endless possibilities. Pots. <laughs> What one calls myself is an interesting question because it's in my career as a maker it's changed. I'd say ceramist. I don't. I'm not a potter, obviously. But I've always worked with the idea that I was a sculptor and a visual artist, a fine artist. I think I'd describe myself as a potter. Um, I've worked in ceramics in clay for ten years, and I've never had someone come up to me and say, "You're a ceramicist, not a sculptor." You know, but the second I got here, there's a huge debate. People didn't know where to put me. The categories were ridiculous. Are you a potter? Are you a ceramicist? Are you a clay artist? I mean, what are you? I'm like a sculptor that works with clay. The, the separation of kind of um, artists into, into categories is kind of a very Renaissance idea. And I kind of think it's kind of maybe outrun its time. In my childhood, uh, a term of abuse was Potter, and I quite liked that kind of outsider-ish kind of um, term. Why clay? Um, I think it was a combination of man and material. It's a great material, but it also can be a, a, a kind of frustrating material. I was 18 when I first touched clay, and I absolutely loved it and found it just really a lovely kind of material. So I've actually always worked with clay, so I've decided to keep it as a tool to make things that you're able to create easily. I do enjoy the, and this might sound contradictory, but the narrowness of it, the specialization of it. Um, I did two degrees. I have a Bachelor's of Fine Arts in Sculpture, which means that I did uh, installation work, large scale work. Um, and after that, I decided that I fell in love with clay so much that I wanted to do a master's in ceramics. Um, I was kind of very intent that I I really wanted to go to Campbell, I didn't want to go to St Martin's, that was more kind of industrial design work, I wanted it to be fine art ceramics. Basically there came a point where I decided that uh, if I wasn't going to act anymore because it wasn't fulfilling me enough, then I needed to do something else. I was learning something, you know, something with a bit of science behind it. And in desperation I went to art school because I didn't want to work. I'm kind of more influenced by everyday life and stories. Uh, rather than an actual artist. I like kind of Jeff Koon's work. I love, um, I, I have a lot of admiration for people like Damien Hirst and how he does things. Um, uh, Chapman Brothers, uh, anything with a bit of humour. My kind of influences are kind of very eclectic. That's, what, uh, that's how I describe them. They're from everywhere. I have numerous influences actually. I look at a lot of visual artists, I look at a lot of installation artists, I look at a lot of clay artists. Um, I think that some of my most influential people are actually my, the contemporary artists that I work with. For example, um, other ceramicists in the state like Michael Lucero, Sergei Asipov, they're all artists that I look at and say, these artists are pushing the boundaries of what sculpture is, but work in clay. There was one other potter whose name I knew before I met Edmund, and that was Lucy Reed. I was very conscious of the kind of my position in kind of ceramics, what I did, because I did one off big sculptural things, giant necklaces, things like that. And they were very popular and got a lot of kind of attention. But I really got into my head I needed a con kind of product. Tonight, see it as just a way to create utilitarian pieces, how you can actually use it to create vast, gorgeous, large scale installations or one off unique objects. Last month, who is a flyer given out where I became a brand. <laughs> and uh, I, 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 I've got a, a small, sh small kind of show, part of another, another show, and it referred to me as Slee, so I became a brand, which was quite interesting. So I'm now I'm a brand. I've had a lot of attention through the fashion world, and I'd, sometimes I think that might work against me. And also, I, there's a lot of humour in my work, so the fact that I did make 
porcelain nipple tassels and sold them through Coco de Mer and, and places like that. I'll, I'll always be, or I was for a couple of years, the nipple tassel girl. And it got me loads of press, which introduced people to the other work. Uh, I think the fact that I'm still doing it 12 years on and I'm making a living, I think I would deduce that it's received okay. I think a lot of people view it as slightly cruddy, but I think that craft is now quite cool. Well, usually when I try to organise an exhibition of my work, I try to figure out where the exhibition might be. Um, I try to do, I do work internationally. I try to keep a foot in the States because I come from there. I have shown my work with gal fine art galleries that have wanted to step into the applied world. It's really hard, you know, one wants to be able to do everything, but you can't. And so you make choices about what you're going to do and, you know, you think, well, is this a good show? Have I shown there before? What, what will I get from this apart from sales? Will this, is this a good one for, in terms of, uh, you know, my career and stuff like that? I think the future of clay in the UK is a very bright one, particularly now in this moment in time. Because we have got such an exciting um, kind of thing happening at the moment. We've got loads of really amazing makers, but I don't think it's kind of seen as a particularly... Um, it's not respected enough, I don't think. It needs to wake up. I think it's getting better though. I think it's a lot more exciting than it used to be and people have more appreciation for it. It's not just factory stuff now. There's a lot of um, spaces that's opening up. A lot of other people that usually haven't looked at clay as a form of art are starting to appreciate it more. Specifically when you had sort of like um, Grayson Perry win the Turner or you have Fishley and Bicep the Tate using clay or Rebecca Warren who's just been another person using clay. Um, I think a lot of people are trying to see it as an art medium as opposed to just this, you know, the thing that's been sort of floating in our everyday lives. I think they're starting to respect it more. As far as the kind of fine art, art kind of um, whatever you want to call it, and it hasn't got a term, and I don't think it should have a term, um, uh, I think that's quite, quite healthy. Okay, okay, let's take it from here.